When you call a function inside a smart contract, there are three ways to throw an error. Require, rebirth, and assert. And when an error is thrown inside a transaction, your gas will be refunded, and any state variables that were updated will be reverted. The changes that were made to any state variables will be undone. Starting with Solidity 0.8, you can also use custom errors to save gas. Let me show you some examples. First, I'll show you an example of how to use require. Require is mostly used to validate inputs and for access control, controlling who gets to call the function. For this example, we'll do an input validation. We'll require that the input i is less than or equal to 10. To use require to do input validation, we'll type require, followed by the condition to check. Here, we'll check that the input i is less than or equal to 10 and if it is not, then we'll throw an error message saying i is greater than 10. So this line of code will check that the input i is less than or equal to 10. And if it is not, we'll throw an error message saying i is greater than 10. If this input validation passes, then you have more code over here. Instead of using require, we can also do the same thing using revert. Let me show you an example of a revert. We'll write the same input validation as require using revert. To do that, we type if the input i is greater than 10, then revert with the message i is greater than 10. These two code using revert and require does the same thing. But revert is a better option if your condition to check is nested in a lot of if statements. For example, your code might look something like this. Inside one if statement, you'll have some code, and then you'll have more if statement, more code, and then finally you want to do some checks. In this case, rebirth is a better option than to use require. Next, let me show you an example of how to use assert. Assert is used to check for condition that should always be true. If the condition evaluates to false, then that means that there might be a bug in your smart contract. Let me show you an example. Here I have a state variable initialized to 1 through 3. Inside the smart contract, there is no place where the state variable num is updated, meaning that this state variable will always be equal to 1 through 3. We can express this as code saying assert the state variable num should always be equal to 1 through 3. If it is not, then that means there is a bug in the smart contract. For example, inside the smart contract, there might be another function called foo. And inside this function, we accidentally update the state variable num so that now num is not equal to 1 to 3. After this function is called, and then this function is called, assert will no longer be true. Num is no longer equal to 1 to 3, meaning that there is a bug in this smart contract. In this case, the bug is that we accidentally updated the state variable num. So use assert to check for conditions that should always be equal to true. Now, when an error is thrown, there will be a gas refund. So for example, if you send 1000 gas and it used up 100 gas, then there will be a gas refund of 900 gas. And also any state variables that were updated before the error was thrown will be undone. Here I have a function named foo. It takes an input of i. When this function is called, it increments the state variable num by one. And then afterwards, it checks that the input i is less than 10. So if I pass in 13 as input, then the state variable will be updated, but this check will fail. So whatever update that I made to the state variable will be undone. The last example that I will show you is custom errors. Custom errors are used to save gas. Here I've copied an example from above, test require. And we'll transform this code into using custom error. The benefit of using custom error is that it is cheaper than to use require with some error message. The longer the error message, the more gas it will use. So if you have a very long error message, it will use up a lot of gas. Now we can save gas by using custom error. We declare custom error by typing error and then followed by the name of the error. I'll name this my error. Right now, custom error can only be used with revert, so we'll transform this code into using revert and custom error. So we'll type if input i is greater than 10, then revert 
with the customer my error. And that is a basic example of how to use custom error. Inside this custom error, you can also log some data. For example, we'll log the color of the function and the input that was passed in. So inside my error, we'll type address, color. The second parameter that we'll log is the input i. So I'll type uint i. And then inside the custom error that is thrown, we'll type message.sender. This will hold the address that called this function test custom error. And then we'll also log the input that was passed in. So we'll type input i. Message.sender is a global variable, so we'll need to change the declaration from peer to view. And that completes the example of custom error.